Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Gray. I am going to, I was just leaning over to write something, but here I'm back. Um, so this is the second day of our introduction to amino acids and the structures of amino acids. In addition to that, this is our second day of the, I guess this is the like our fifth week of classes. Um, so this is our second asynchronous meeting or the second asynchronous meeting that we're having about amino acids. We will be revisiting all of this stuff uh, in the upcoming week when we have synchronous meetings. So that would be on the 1st and 3rd of October in advance of our exam on the 8th of October. Now, just a little bit of a reminder, and I'm sorry, my dogs are wrestling. Um, just as a little bit of a reminder, you have your opportunity to redeem your exam one grade. That is due on the 27th. I believe I have the deadline set at 11 p.m. I'm like 99% sure about those times. Um, but that's one thing that you want to, you know, it's an easy opportunity to improve your grades. So definitely take advantage of that. Okay, so we're on to amino acids day two. So amino acids, we've talked about them a little bit. What we previously discussed were... Um, we discussed our polar amino acids. And within the group of polar amino acids, there were positively charged residues, and negatively charged, and uncharged. So there's kind of a third group of um, polar amino acids. The groups that... Down. It's more. The groups that we're going to get into today are our non-polar amino acids and our aromatic amino acids. So a nonpolar molecule, and thinking about our definition of nonpolar, I, I addressed this previously, but um, I want to go through it again. A nonpolar molecule is a molecule that has no charge. Okay, so that's one thing. But keep in mind, there were the polar uncharged residues. A molecule with no charge and no lone pairs of electrons. Now, primarily or predominantly, some good examples of nonpolar molecules are hydrocarbons. So these are molecules that are just hydrogen, or predominantly hydrogen, and carbon. Now, another group of amino acids are aromatic amino acids. Um, aromatic molecules are molecules with a ring. Um, and benzene is a good example of an aromatic molecule. Now, it's not a good example of an aromatic amino acid, but it's an example of a aromatic molecule. Now, amino acid names. I want to revisit these because this is an expectation for your, your next exam. And this is like a really good and easy way to get a bunch of points and rack up a bunch of points. These are the names of the molecules, aspartic acid, serine, and so on. So these are the 20 amino acids that I want you to know the names of. These molecules also have three letter identifiers listed here. And I believe that, yes, we are good there. Phenylalanine, tryptophan. Um, I want to make sure that I didn't overlook anything or type anything incorrectly. Aspartate, serine, cysteine, leucine, isoleucine, ILE, proline, PRO, threonine, PHR, glutamic acid, GLU, LYS, ASN, VAL, TYR, PHE, MET, ALA, GLY, GLN, PYR, ARG, and HIS. So those are the correct three letter identifiers. All our single letter codes and our single letter identifiers, I have no issue repeating these because we definitely need to know them. The letters that are not used are B, O, U, J, X, and Z. That's six letters from our 26 letters in our English alphabet. There are six that are not used in our 20 proteinogenic amino acids. Glutamine is Q. That's one of the funky ones or one of the funky ones. Um, I-L-E for I. Um, so this, let me make sure, A-R-G, P-R-O, A-S-N, A-L-A, Yep, these are the 20 single letter codes. I want you to know these single letter codes. A question that you might expect on an exam would be, what is the single letter code for ALA? 
hey, what is the single letter code for proline? And you have to know, okay, it's PRO. So make sure that you're comfortable and familiar with all of these. Now, here it is. In, in college football, there was a guy named Keith Jackson who would say the granddaddy of them all. And you talk about the Rose Bowl, uh, the, the football game. Well, here's kind of the granddaddy of them all in the sense that this is the end of our 20 proteinogenic amino acids. These are our nonpolar residues and our aromatic residues. Now, there's one other amino acid that falls into this aromatic group, but it's also a polar residue. So when you look at this slide right here, what I want you to be taking away from this is that proline is nonpolar. Tryptophan is aromatic and it is nonpolar. Now, typically what people will say is they'll identify a residue and they'll be like, okay, well, that is aromatic. And that's kind of the end of the conversation. But what I want you to know is that this is like, think about nonpolar as a kind of big umbrella term or like a big group. Within that group, there are aromatic residues. So tryptophan and tryptophan and phenylalanine are examples of molecules that are both aromatic and nonpolar. Proline, lysine, leucine, isoleucine, alanine, valine, methionine. These are all molecules that are just, just nonpolar. Now I bring this up because one of the things that we really kind of focus on when it comes to interactions between amino acids and protein structures is what types of interactions are they capable of participating in? So what I mean by that is when we talked about our, our polar amino acids, we had serine and threonine. Those are two amino acids that they both have a hydroxyl group. They both have an OH. They both have an alcohol. So they are very good candidates for hydrogen bonding. Now, when you look at this or this, or even, yeah, let's look at methionine. Does anyone see any oxygens here? And I'll, just so we're on the same page, there's a carbon, carbon, and I'm just talking about the circled area, the carbon and a bunch of hydrogens. Now let's go over to valine. It's a carbon, again, and a bunch of hydrogens. This whole chain here, we've got a carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, sulfur, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. Are there any oxygens here? in any of those, any of those circled areas? No, there are not. And because there's no oxygens, they're really not good candidates for any sort of hydrogen bonding. Similarly, there's no nitrogens. So they're also not good candidates for hydrogen bonding. So when we look at all these, well, they're not gonna be involved in any sort of hydrogen bonding. What type of bonding could they be involved in? Or what type of interactions could they be involved in? Well, these amino acids, your nonpolar residues, I got to find my cursor. These are great for hydrophobic interactions. So these are great for hydrophobic interactions, not good for ionic interactions, not good for hydrogen bonding. We're looking primarily at hydrophobic interactions. And that's because these hydrocarbons, that term hydrophobic, well, they are fearful of water. Not fearful of hydrogen, but they're fearful of water. They don't like water. They will repel water. So things that inv are involved in hydrophobic interactions, they repel water. They say, get away water. And so what that means is that if you were to put these into a solution, into water, well, they're not really going to get close to water. They're going to kind of like push it away. Now, all of these amino acids are nonpolar, so they like hydrophobic interactions. Now, 
the way that I want you to think about this, and I think it's really effective to think about this, is classifying molecules as, well, nonpolar, just say water haters. So then another way of phrasing that is they are nonpolar. I'm going to say nonpolar friendly. What I mean by that is they like other nonpolar molecules. So it's important to know these structures. It's important also to know the likely interactions that they participate in. Because those interactions, what they're going to do is demonstrate the types, or they're going to demonstrate something about a protein structure. Now, I'm going to talk about each of the, each one of these molecules kind of individually. And I'll give you a little bit of an idea that are, you know, what are the molecules that are important to know? And maybe the ones that are a little bit easier to know based on a particular structure. So the first one that I want to talk about is known as proline. And proline, and actually, let me let me clarify that a little bit. I'm going to say A, A's. Every single amino acid has the exact same what's called backbone. So if we look at this, our backbone is those three atoms. And if you look at every single one of these molecules, you've got N, C, C. N, C, C. N, C, C. Okay. Now, if you look at almost all of those molecules, that nitrogen has three hydrogens bound to it. And what's extremely important, it's got that positive charge right there. Okay. Now, if you're looking at that and you say, okay, well, I was with you with the three hydrogens, because if we look at glycine, glycine has one, two, three hydrogens, and it's got a positive charge, good. Then if you look at proline, you see, do the counting, one hydrogen, two hydrogen. I see a third hydrogen, but that hydrogen has a bond to this carbon. So this nitrogen doesn't actually have three hydrogens bound to it. Instead, it has two hydrogens. But that third, it does have a third kind of bond coming off of it. That's right here, going to a carbon. And then it also has a fourth bond going back to the carbon. So my point here is that all of these hydrogen or nitrogens have four bonds going to them. They also have a positive charge. Those four bonds are going to either three hydrogens and one carbon or two hydrogens and two carbons, giving us four. But what I want you to take away from this is the backbone of every single amino acid looks like this, NCC. Now, this nitrogen on the left-hand side typically is going to have hydrogen, hydrogen, <clears throat> hydrogen. And nitrogen is kind of funky because when nitrogen has four bonds to it, it has a positive charge. Carbon, on the other hand, this what's known as an alpha carbon right here, typically is going to have a hydrogen. And then in our group, basically where our variation is, it's more. Sorry, my dog's name is S'more and she started chewing on something. And then this last carbon is going to have double bonded oxygen, and an OH. Now, I want to go ahead and look at a couple of amino acids. And I'm going to pick these out as ones that I expect you to know the structure of. Proline. And I'm writing these down on my, my paper here. Proline right here, valine. Then leucine, 
and isoleucine. Those are your four that I want you to know as our nonpolar residues. I also want you to know the aromatic amino acid, phenylalanine, P-H-E. Okay, so we're gonna visit each one of these five structures, and then I'm gonna bring back uh, tyrosine, one of our other amino acids that is from our previous conversation. Okay, so I clear out all my drawings, and I'm gonna show you what drawing proline looks like. N-C-C. -C. I always like to start with my carbon, after I've drawn this backbone, what I'm going to complete is my carbon on the right-hand side of my structure. That's going to have a double bonded oxygen and then an OH. What is this functional group called? We learned about it in the first section. That's right, it's a carboxylic acid. <laughs> Which if you think about the class of molecules we're talking about, we're talking about amino acids. Now let's go over to the left-hand side of our molecule. <clears throat> H3 plus. I'm writing H3 just for time and simplicity. This is our amino group, or our amine. Now, I do have to make one minor change because what we're trying to draw is we're trying to draw proline. <laughs> and with proline, I don't have three hydrogens going to it. Instead, I've got two hydrogens and then carbon. Okay, I'll come back to that in just a second. My central carbon here is going to have a hydrogen. <laughs> It's also going to have a C, another C, and then that other C brings me to a ring. So I make a, how many atoms is this ring? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. This is my five-membered ring that makes up proline. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, okay, I heard ring. And if I think back to aromatics, well, it's a molecule with a ring. It is a molecule with a ring, but what this amino acid does not have, it doesn't have any double bonds. So this is not an aromatic amino acid. Now, each one of these carbons that I've drawn has H2, H2, and H2. So that is my structure for proline. I want you to be able to identify and pick that up. Now, proline is unique because it, it really has an impact on what a protein looks like in three dimensions. <clears throat> it has what's called a very rigid backbone. Now, after proline, I wanna talk about, oops, is my next amino acid, valine. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll keep valine on this same page. First of all, our backbone, N, C, C. The right-hand side of my molecule, O, O, H, my carboxylic acid. My right side of my molecule, I can write H3 plus because I know that proline is really the only amino acid where I'm going to end up with H2, N plus. <clears throat> so I've got H3 then I've got my alpha carbon with a hydrogen coming off of it. And here's where my R group is. I am drawing valine. So what I need is basically carbon and then kind of this nice little branch. Okay. The only thing that I'm missing in this molecule is my carbon right here. How many bonds does it have? It's got one, two, three. Okay. How many bonds does carbon love to have? It loves to have four. So all that I need to do is do that. Hydrogen. Add a hydrogen there. Now I've got four bonds. This is valine. <laughs> okay. 
Now my next two amino acids, I'm gonna kind of draw them side by side. Leucine and isoleucine. I always like to say that leucine and isoleucine, it's like they're siblings, but one's a little bit different than the other. Leucine and isoleucine, well, isoleucine is an isomer of leucine. So L-E-U for leucine, I-L-E, isoleucine. <clears throat> what we have is N-C-C, N-C-C, right side of my molecule, O, OH. O, OH. H3 plus, H3 plus, H, H. Leucine and isoleucine. I think that leucine is kind of similar to valine, which is why I like to draw it after I've gotten valine. Basically, what we're doing is we're taking this kind of branch structure there, the same thing as valine, but we're making leucine a little bit longer. So you got CH2. And then that's where I draw this thing up here. So I've got CH, CH3, <clears throat> CH3. That is leucine. Now, isoleucine. Let's think back to our definition of iso. ISO, what we're talking about, isomerization or an isomer. An isomer is really just a molecule that's been rearranged. And it's not the exact same components, but they're positioned a little differently. We got C, C. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and move it up. And what that means is we got to take one of these hydrogens and move it down. So what that's going to look like is this CH3, basically for the purposes of drawing, I'm going to draw this down, CH3. Then I'm going to rearrange this hydrogen. And the new hydrogen that I'm moving from here, I'm going to write this as CH2. Then I'm going to throw here CH3. And let's count this up. This carbon has three hydrogens and a carbon-carbon bond. This carbon has two hydrogens and two carbon-carbon bonds. This carbon has two carbon-carbon bonds. Oh, a third carbon-carbon bond. So it has three bonds to it. What do we need? We need this to also have a hydrogen there. So I show you these because, well, they're all kind of similar, but a little bit different. For one, proline is kind of funny because it has an R group that circles back to the N termini of the molecule. Valine, leucine, and isoleucine are very similar in structure. I always like to think that, or the way that I kind of personify it in my head is I say that valine and leucine are siblings, but one's taller. Leucine is taller because it has a longer R group. Now, leucine and isoleucine, well, they're also siblings. So what's the difference between them? It's almost like they're twins, but what is it? They're fraternal twins, not or paternal twins. I can't remember. They're not identical twins. There we go. That's what I know. So they're non-identical twins. So they're basically the same, but some differences. And I'm not saying that that's how non-identical twins are the same person. That's not what I'm saying at all. They're different. They're distinct, just like leucine and isoleucine are different and distinct. Now, the last two amino acids that I want to go over, I want to go over phenylalanine and I want to go over tyrosine. Phenylalanine, P-H-E. <clears throat> tyrosine, T-Y-R. So when we look at phenylalanine and tyrosine, got N, <clears throat> oh, there we go, N, C, C, N, C, C. I'm going to draw the backbones and then I'm going to draw the R groups, the parts that make these molecules different from one another. Okay. 
okay? There's my, my right-hand side of my molecules. H3 plus, H3 plus. Carbon gets that, that. My R groups, they're gonna start out and they're going to look the exact same. Because off of my alpha carbon, there's a CH2. Then, okay, I'm gonna kind of go line by line here. I got those two lines, so it makes almost like a an upside down Y. Then I got these, so now it's a Y with the legs. And then we've got this. So it's it's a nice little hexagon on there. Now, after that, for phenylalanine, we've got this. So we have those that double single double pattern, and that's kind of on repeat. Tyrosine, same thing. But the last thing that tyrosine has is an OH bit, an alcohol. So that's why tyrosine is aromatic, <clears throat> but it is also polar. It's aromatic because it has this ring. Just as phenylalanine is aromatic because it has that ring. Now, tyrosine is polar because it has this OH group. That OH group gives it a kind of a, it has lone pairs of electrons, so it can hydrogen bond. Now, when you compare these two amino acids, they're very similar, but that hydrogen, that hydroxide group there is what makes them different from one another. So those are the last two amino acids that I wanted to talk about. Phenylalanine is, so they're both aromatic. They're both aromatic. Phenylalanine is nonpolar. Tyrosine is polar. That's the distinction between these two in terms of their classification. Now, the single letter codes for these, tyrosine is Y. Phenylalanine is F. It uses phonics. Proline is P. Valine is V. Leucine is L. Isoleucine is I. And those are our amino acids. Those are the whole, the nonpolar residues that I wanted you to be familiar with. These six are definitely amino acids that I might just provide you with a structure and say, what's the name of this molecule? Or what's the single letter code? Or what's the three letter code for these? I want you to focus on these six. And I want you to focus on the polar positive and polar negative residues. I'm not going to I'm not going to ask you to identify the structures of any polar uncharged. So polar pause. Uh, <clears throat> polar positive and polar negative. No polar uncharged on the exam. I won't ask you about the structures. I might ask you about the single or three letter codes, but I won't ask you to know the structures. Okay, well, I hope this is helpful and I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to set up a time to meet with you and talk about anything. All right, everybody, have a good one.